Oh, 0800 313 4444. Plusnet will do you proud. Welcome back. Uh, well, now, the Great Depression of the 1930s had a devastating effect on Europe and the rest of the world, and some say we could be heading that way again, although obviously in a different fashion. Well, joining me now from London is the Professor of European History, Julian Jackson, and I'm also joined from Athens by the Professor of Economics, Yanis Varoufakis. So I want to start with Professor Varoufakis because I, I mentioned there uh, the rest of the world perhaps entering a 1930-style Great Depression. Many say that Greece is already in one. There is no doubt that this is our deep, deep Great Depression. And the difference between depression and recession is that whereas during a recession what you have is an increase in unemployment, a culling of the more inefficient businesses, in a depression you have a complete breakdown of the circuits of credit. And uh, what, what is effectively happened during the depression, this is precisely the predicament that Greece is finding itself in, is that you have a wholesale collapse. That is, companies are going to the wall independently of whether they're efficient, profitable or not. And uh, once you are in that deep hole, uh, there's, there's nothing redemptive about your situation. You don't spring out of it through the normal operation of markets. Uh, the capacity of, 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 the, of the social economy to recover is effect, 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 effectively gone. And something at the political sphere has to happen in order to uh, return you to, uh, not to a growth path, to a modicum of hope. Well, Professor Jackson, I mean, do you feel, I mean, no two economic or indeed political crises are alike, but there are parallels potentially with the 1930s, in particular with that, that drying up of credit that Professor Varoufakis was mentioning and, and an inadequate political response? Yes, I, I, I think there are um, a lot of analogies. One always has to be careful about analogies because um, you, I, you probably heard of that, uh, the famous Godwin's law of Nazi analogies, the idea that uh, everything can be, uh, that in any debate somebody always says, oh, it's going to be, eventually they, they raise the, the Nazis as a comparison. But I think there are some 30s comparisons that are very important, and I think they're economic and they're political. And on the economic side, I think it's quite extraordinary the way in which the language with which political leaders are talking about the way to deal with the current situation echoes unbelievably eerily the language of the 1930s. It's almost as though Keynes hadn't lived. When you hear um, Schäuble, the uh, German a finance minister, he sounds totally like, uh, in his, his obsessive fear of um, inflation, like Hendrik Brüning, Heinrich Brüning, who was, of course, the Chancellor of Germany before Hitler came to power. And there I'm using the analogy. Or if you think of um, Osborne, he sounds to me, in the way he talks about austerity, 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 terribly like the Chancellor uh, of the Exchequer in the government in 1930, Philip Snowden. Um, this idea that, that you, run a, a, you run a country like you run a household, this, this obsession with the idea that uh, the answer to a growth crisis is austerity, this very moralistic way of talking about economics. Um, if we just leave for a moment the case of Greece, if you look at the case of, of Spain, for example, and Ireland, uh, the idea, there's this general idea, oh, the Irish and the Spanish behaved uh, irresponsibly, immorally, and they've now got to be punished for it, whereas, in fact, the truth is that before this crisis, both Ireland uh, and Spain were running budget surpluses. They had rather low uh, proportion of government debt. And the, the problem, their deficit problems, are not the cause of the crisis, but caused by the crisis. So that's the first thing. I think there are a lot ah. of economic parallels. I also think there are political parallels. We could talk about those if you want in more detail, but it seems to me we're living okay. through... A tectonic uh, yeah. shift in, in European politics at the moment of an extraordinary kind. OK. Well, yeah, well, I just want to put that back to Professor Varoufakis, who I know has been agreeing with an awful lot of what you said. And uh, just to add into that, we're hearing an awful lot in terms of those parallels of the 1930s. We're, we're seeing that polarisation taking place, being accentuated in Greece between the, the extreme right and the extreme left. Yes, indeed. If I may run a little bit more uh, longer with the, with the analogy, uh, it, it is the, the, the comparison with the 1930s is just eerily opposite. So think about it. In 1929, you had a financial sector complete collapse, which then infected the real economy. 
And then the first thing that went was the common currency of the era, which was the gold standard. And immediately after that, you had Europeans turning against Europeans, Germans turning against Germans, and the only people who benefited from this were effectively the serpents, the Nazis. Similarly today, in, in, you can see that in Greece, you can see it in the Eurozone. The Germans have, ter have turned uh, against the Greeks. The Greeks have returned the compliment by turning against the Germans. Very, very soon the Greeks will be turning against the Greeks. We, we feel it today, the polarization in this country today on election day is astonishing. All uh, uh, semblance of a rational debate has completely and utterly collapsed and all we have now is polarization. Very soon, once the disease is transferred from Spain and Italy to Germany, the German people, once uh, their unemployment starts rising, we are going to experience, unfortunately, very similar uh, polarization. And the, the specter of the 1930s will be with, with us. Hopefully, Marx was right, that history repeats okay. itself as fast, but it's not a given. <laughs> OK, well, Professor Jackson, I mean, the big difference in talking about Germany, where I am, the big difference between the 1930s and now is the position, the economic and political position of Germany. Then they still remember the hyperinflation of the 1920s, the reparations imposed upon them after the First World War. They're in a very dif different economic position now and in a, in a position you feel to, to avoid the looming crisis. Well, I think uh, I want to come back to the because the, the political issue and not just to fixate on Germany. Um, though you could say, you know, if you want, to, you could say that having tried to destroy the world twice, the Germans are now having a good go at it in the third time round, 1914, 1939, and now now. But um, just look at what's happening, for example, in Ireland, in the Netherlands, in Hungary. What you've got is um, a complete, and in Italy. The parties, the parties that were dominant in politics uh, since the second... In fact, in the case of... Um, let's just take the case of the Netherlands. There's no government in the Netherlands. The Netherlands government resigned because the extreme right supporting uh, party pulled the plug because on, on it because of the austerity measures. So there's going to be an election in Germany. Fina Foyle, which had been dominant in Ireland since 1921, no longer rules. Italy doesn't basically have a government. There is uh, a crisis of... Um, democratic legitimacy, which is very worrying. We've, we've tended to be uh, brought up since uh, the Second World War on the idea that somehow that, that there's something natural about democracy, about democracy working. And the lesson of the interwar years is that there's nothing okay. natural about it at all. Um, just in, and all then right. what you get is the rise of extremes. Uh, and, can, and can I just mention, in, in Hungary, for example... I'm very... I, I, I'm... Very sorry, uh, Professor Jackson. I'm really sorry. We are out of time. And our thanks to Professor Varoufakis there in Athens as well. Uh, lots more on the Euro crisis after the break. So, as well as two months' worth of free car insurance, we can offer... A free pen, 